CBS 46 News presents Public Affairs on Peach. Good morning and welcome. I'm Karen Greer. Here's a look at what's coming up on today's show. Is your child a picky eater? Yeah, well, we've got some tips on how you can get them to eat what they need to eat. Get all those nutrients and all the good vitamins. But first, Metro Atlanta students, look at that. Have a few weeks under their belts for the new school year. Is your child off to a rough start or are they having a great school year so far? We have some tips for you on how to help your child succeed. And joining me now, you asked for her. We had a little time with her in another show, so we've gotten her back. Kim Bearden, <laughs> co-founder, executive director, and language arts teacher at the Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta. We're so excited to have you here. Author and author, also an author mm -hmm. and a mom. And a mom. <laughs> Kim, we ran out of time last time, so we want to talk about all the good stuff again and kind of get to some answers, some questions that people wanted answered. Um, what are the number one tips you would say that parents need to know that you can share with our viewers to help our students succeed? I know that we have very busy, very difficult lives, all of us do, but to be as drama free as possible is what's best for your child. Even if you are a parent who's new to having your child in school or maybe your child has advanced to a next level like middle school for the first time, the calmer you are around your child, the calmer your child will be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that really translates a lot when it comes to homework. Okay. I think that that seems to be the area when I meet with parents and they talk about their stresses, it's that conflict of homework. And I know schools have varying degrees of homework that they assign. Yes. But when you are at home and you're trying to work with your child, every child is different. Mm -hmm. That's an important point. Um, if your BFF on Facebook posted, her child comes home every day and sits right down and does an hour of homework and then wants to read and doesn't want to watch TV, that's great. But most of us aren't so fortunate no, with no. our children. It's not all of us. And so you have to learn to understand your child. And so when it comes to those nights when you're trying to sit there and get your child to do work, you have to understand that that child's been sitting all day long, perhaps mm -hmm. in school. And so the more that you can really break that up for your child and create a really wonderful nurturing environment for homework, the better. So for example, if you have a child who's very active, and, and all children really are, if a child looks like they're gonna have a whole hour of homework, that's a long time to sit wow. there and be attentive. So set that timer even on the kitchen uh, timer on the kitchen stove, you know, for 15 minutes and say, baby, I want you to do 15 minutes. And when that timer gets off, you can get up, you can take a drink of water, you can go shoot some basketball. What a great idea. You can run around, then you got to come back after five minutes. You know, okay. But just give them a few minutes to take a little break. Um, another thing is really when you're setting up an environment for homework, the bedroom is not a good place for a child to be doing Yes, homework. with music going or the TV going. Yeah, so, you know, older kids, yes. You go to 17, 18 year old, they've learned. But when children are first really trying to learn that responsibility of how to study, um, I've had parents say, my child is studying for six hours. But then I'll talk to the child and, you know, the, and the child's not doing anything wrong, right. but they're daydreaming, they're checking their chat, they're going wow. here, they're going there. And really, it may be 30 minutes of homework, but it's interspersed with all the other distractions, oh, right? Goodness. So having a spot where maybe you can monitor, but not hover, don't be a helicopter. It, you know, if you're sitting there the whole time, like, have you done this? All right, let's do this one. Let's do and this that's one. usually what we do. That's what we do. And it, it creates conflict. And honestly, it's not helping your child. Okay. Um, we feel like we're helping our child if we're sitting right there beside them doing every problem. But really what we're teaching them is that they need you to do everything for them. Okay, Kim, how'd you learn that? How did you see this as a process? Is it from teaching or being a mom? Both. <laughs> it's definitely from both. And I have four children mm -hmm. and my four children and every child learns differently, receives information differently, um, you know, understands things differently, and really um, learns how to study in a different way. And so this, and I've watched parents work with their kids. You know, I, I've you know, sat down with parents and, and watched them kind of tutor their kids to give them some, some tips. And quite often it's like, okay, what do you do next? What do you do next? What do you do next? That's it's not good. too much. Okay. Um, but if you're trying to help the child, a, a, an idea might be, okay, why don't you try to do these three by yourself? I'm going to go over here and work on dinner or whatever it is. I'm going to go do my work for my job. And then I'm going to come back when you've done three, show them to me. And let's see how you've done. What if they're having problems understanding? Say it's math. Right. And they need your help to calculate these equations. Walk through one or two problems with them and then say, okay, I want you to try to do the next two by yourself okay. and walk away. Because if you're sitting right there, I've had students who've even admitted to me, you know, because when I'm trying to help the child, they'll say, they'll say, well, yeah, I kind of figure that if I just, you know, ask for help, my mom's going to sit there and kind of do it for me. Right. <laughs> you know? And I'm not going to learn. And I'm not going to learn because you can't go to college with your child. 
And, and the thing is, is that as parents, we're tired too. Oh, yes. You know, we've so you been doing stuff all day. Short and you get, there's arguing and there's, because you're, you're, you're beat. Right. And, and, and we've got stuff we got to do at night too. And so for you to be sitting there at the table for an hour, it, it doesn't really help any of us. Now I've got some parents who are already, the kids are hating being back at school. Right. They're struggling. The parents are picking them up early so they don't have to take that math test they're not prepared for. That's not the answer. It's not. You know, what we've got to do is try to do everything we can to make learning fun. Okay. So let's say the child does have that math test, and let's say that child is resisting studying for that math test. you got to find ways. You know, I was teaching my son's multiplication tables. I put on a beat. We sat there, and, and we would kind of, like, wrap the different multiplication Perfect. tables. with, And we had loud music, and we were kind of just dancing and being and silly. They got it. And they got it. Or you can even do things around the house, like post things around the house. Get some sticky notes and post different multiplication tables around the house. Tell them to go find all of them, find the question, run up and tell you what it is. Or you could even, if you have multiple kids, have them race to go, you know, find the question, come back and be the first one to tell you the answer. Or, you know, have a change of venue. Go outside and work on it. You know, even just say, okay, run down there, get question one, run down. Okay, here's number one, run wow. down number two. Things where you can make it physical, but they're still doing the task. Or sometimes even one of my former students, she said, you know my favorite place to do homework, Miss Beard? And I said, what? She goes, my mama takes me to the bookstore. Oh, wow. So they go to Barnes and Noble and they sit there in the little cafe and, and it's just work. a change of environment and you'll see other people on their laptops working. And so she said, I feel like I'm, you know, a professional doing my work, but I'm working on my schoolwork. So things like that sometimes too, if you're really having that headbutting, you got to kind of think a little bit outside the box so that homework is something that they don't dread, but something they realize, okay, this is just another way to learn and learning can be fun. All right. Well, we have uh, a lot of questions about if the students don't get along with the teacher, how do you work that through? Right. So um, teachers and parents, we've all got to understand we're a team. We're on the same team. We're not opposing each other. What we all ultimately want is for the children to be successful. And Sometimes people make the assumptions that we're on opposite teams. And so the very first thing is that, you know, I, I, I tell teachers this and I would ask parents too to, to understand that this is something we've got to do together. And even if a parent has um, something that they're concerned about or frustrated with a, about a teacher, you know, I would hope that they would go to the teacher first and not express those frustrations in front of the child. I love that. Yeah, even if something doesn't sound right to you as a parent, if you're like, oh, well, I'm going to go tell that teacher what I think, then what you're doing is undermining that teacher. And so your child may respond differently to that teacher. And then it may spiral down into different kinds of behavior in that class or disrespect being shown to that teacher. And so it doesn't help anyone. We're going to take a break on that one. Okay. I love that. Go warm up your cup of coffee, get another <laughs> cup of juice and tea. We're going to talk more with Kim Bearden about the importance of calm mornings to get that day started off right and uh, everything else you need to know as we try and get our kids motivated to enjoy school. We'll be right back.